looking at this night and it's, it's going to be a very interesting discussion because we are all students. I'm a student, I still write exams. In fact, I just finished an exam and in fact, I'm having exams again in a few months, few weeks time from now. So we are all students and it's going to be a very interesting discussion. You get? So I just want you to pay attention um, be focused and um, you're going to get a lot of helpful tips from this class tonight. Yeah, so um, let me share my screen now. Let me share my screen. I, I would just like to share my screen so that we pick it from there. I know that um, exam is near. Hold on, let me see if someone can see my screen. Okay, can you see my screen, please? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. Yes, sir. Olivia, what can you yes, see? Yes, sir. <laughs> Not since my exams ask. ask. Great, great. Now, when, when, when someone hears ARC, it'd be like, okay, maybe this, this Baba wants to come and share us or a joke or oh, how to quickly, how to quickly pass your exam or how to pass your exam without reading. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm here to share with you. Now, you have to understand that this is examination and the purpose of this class is not to give us uh, shortcuts, shortcuts, shortcuts to passing examination. No, it's, it's not shortcuts. We are not sharing shortcuts here. But what we're going to be discussing tonight are those tools, those resources that you can put together. And by putting them together, you are sure and you are assured of success. There are, there are things that, there are principles that if you apply them diligently, if you go by those principles, you are going to, you're not going to have any issues with your examination, both hospital final and um, um, nursing council examination. Some of these principles are the principles I applied when I was writing my own hospital final, and I had distinctions in paper one, paper two, and paper three hospital final. And I was writing my perioperative um, nursing council examination. It, uh, I applied some of these principles as well. And I had two credits in my um, final exam for perioperative nursing. So I'm very sure that if you could apply some of these um, principles and you engage them diligently, you're sure to Oh, okay, you're short. Okay, I think some people are in the waiting room. Let me just check. Okay. All right, let me admit this person. Janet is waiting. All right, great. Okay, so uh, like, as I was saying, once you are able to apply these principles, you are good to go. And I hope we are ready. So let's just shoot, let's shoot, let's shoot. Us David, I think it's time for your pen and paper to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, great. Let's, let's move. You don't have much time. So I'll, be, I'll start by asking everyone, one question and I want you all to respond in the chat box. Like, I need your answers. I need your answers in the chat box. And the question is, what is the cheapest or easiest way to pass any examination? I, I need an answer before we continue. What is the cheapest way you know to pass any examination? I need answers in the chat box. Just drop your answer in the chat box. The cheapest way you know to pass any examination. Linda said reading. Yeah, reading, great, great. Olivia said, prepare with all available past questions of that examination. Okay. Consola said, preparing by reading ahead before exam period. 
Okay. Ola Nike, the content creator. <laughs> okay, if you need content, let me just give an advert. If you need content, you're trying to run a brand, promote a brand, you're trying to put up something um, for your brand or for something you're trying to do, you have anything you want to do around content creation, please just reach out to Ola Nike Shitsu. Ola Nike Shitsu, you can get a contact later after the class your content creation. So Olanike, you have to pay me for this promotion. So let's continue. So Olanike said, adequate preparation, that is reading. Okay, Zoom user said reading, practicing past questions and all. Great, makes sense. Study by thinking like the teacher would. Mm. 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 Okay, Kwenzala said, set questions for yourself and answer them on your own, great. Omotola said, I'm studying to prepare. Yes. Okay, great. Nice one. Nice contribution so far. Yeah. We are all right. We are all very, very correct. These are some of the ways to pass examination. But the question says, what is the cheapest or easiest way? Some of these ways that you guys mentioned is not cheap, it's not easy. Is it easy to read? <laughs> All of you don't form like it's easy to read. Though. It's not, is it easy to read? <laughs> Consola can, can answer that one. She knows that it's not easy to read. <laughs> Olivia, yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's, not <laughs> it's not easy to read, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not yeah. easy to read. But and sometimes even, it's easy when you prepare like two, three months ahead, then during those exam periods, it looks like you are refreshing your brain. Just you understand? Yeah, makes sense. That's 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 another angle. Now, someone said one very interesting thing in the chat box. Now, David said, by seeing the answer. So, <laughs> so can, you, can you explain what that means to us in, in one minute? No, 30 seconds, one minute is too much. Sir, so, can you can you explain? Maybe I need to start saying the answers too. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, when you said cheapest way, you meant cheapest way. There's no cheap okay. way. <laughs> Maybe you see the answer. Hey, that's a cheap way. Uh, uh, actually, that's the cheapest way. But that's that's it. That's a way that will land you in trouble. <laughs> All right, so let's let's continue. Um, let's let's move. Now, there, there is a common complaint from students when it comes to preparation for examinations. Yeah, I've been writing exams. I've written a lot of examinations. The ones I actually prepared for, the ones I didn't prepare for, exams, impromptu, planned, emergencies, urgent, any kind. I've written a lot of exams. And, um, and then I've interacted with a lot of students. I was a student. I am a student. And... Uh, I've interacted with a lot of students and then I found out that there are some um, common complaints that are peculiar to students, especially when exam is near. You know that there is always one kind of upsurge of adrenaline, upsurge of hormone when exams is near and you know there's this urge, there's this urgency on you to start preparing for the exams and um, start reading and gathering resources and you know preparing towards the exam. Now, there is this common complaint and the first one is the time is not enough. I don't have enough time. Have you heard something like that before? Yes, and you've even said something like that before. Ah, I don't have enough time to read though. The time is not enough. Like it's not that same time that you've been having since. <laughs> Another common complaint is uh, there are plenty of courses to read, though. I read message. Ah, message is bulky. Message is this, message is that. Uh, another one is ah, anatomy and physiology is too much. It's too much. I have to read everything. I have to do this. I have to study the diagram, labelings, and all. Ah, the escape plan to read, though. Another person will say, ah, this, I think, okay, community health nursing, reproductive health, all those courses very very bulky courses so another major complaint and common complaint here from students is ah these courses are very plenty 
Yeah, and true, true. They are actually much. Yeah, they're actually very much. And then another complaint you hear mostly from students is, uh, I don't even know where to start. This one used to annoy me actually. <laughs> This one used to annoy me, like, how will you not know where to start? Start anywhere. Go and start from the back, start from the middle, start from the front, anywhere you like. Go and start, but you just have to start. And um, one of those major complaints here is, I don't know where to start, you know? And then it is understandable. It is understandable when the courses are too much, when the resources are too much, the resources are too much, the, the lecturers are bombarding you front and back. Some are even organizing extra classes. You know that some tutors are actually fond of doing something. When exam is near, that's when they will start bombarding you with resources. The material they've not shared with you since the beginning of the semester or since the time you've been spending in school, when it's one week to exam, that's when you start seeing materials. Then you start asking, when did we do this one? <laughs> When did they do this one? <laughs> when did they teach us this one? And you get confused. You, you'll be like, okay, so where exactly do I start? This is another very common question when it comes to preparing for exams, final exams, so don't matter. Um, <laughs> Sola said we can relate. Yeah, can relate. If you can relate with all these things I'm saying, just, be, just let me know in the chat box so that I will know that I'm talking with my, my guys. <laughs> We are all in this, so we, we gather day, like we gather day. So another very common complaint is, I forget things easily. Now, yeah, so, someone said, I, for, I, I forget things easily. This is another very major complaint you hear from students. And this is understandable as well. You know, our memory capacity, our capacity when it comes to retention, is not the same. And then some people struggle with um, comprehending fast, some struggle with retaining information, some struggle with recollecting information that they've stored. So a lot of things and you know, you hear people say, I forget things easily, I can't remember. Uh, if I read it today, it will still be as if I've not read anything. I know this this one is 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 a very common complaint to that that you hear from students like after reading for four five six hours you still feel like you've not read anything have you felt that way omotola said i can relate yeah yeah i've i've felt that way too i've felt that way after re reading long hours and stood up what you just finished reading someone will ask you and you'll be like ah I just finished reading this, you know, I can't remember. <laughs> you get things like that. So it happens. And another very common slang we say is, can this exam just come and go? <laughs> like, can this exam just come and go? Like, uh, even before starting the preparation, I'm tired already. Like, I'm let this exam just come and work. I beg, I beg, I'm tired. <laughs> hey, good. <laughs> You know that being a student is actually very interesting, very interesting, very rigorous at the same time. I, I, I missed those moments of being an active student in squad when we use some of these things. So now these are, the com these are some of the common complaints we hear from students when it comes to preparing for exams. But I believe that by the end of this class, by the time you will be leaving this class this evening, I'm sure that any of these complaints will not come from your mouth. Say amen. <laughs> All right, let's move. So there are three phases of examination, three phases of examination. We have before the examination, that's the pre-exam. We have the entry exam, that's during the examination. And then we have the after examination, that's post examination. So we are going to be examining the things you are supposed to do or the things that will help you in each phases of this examination. Now, the period of before the examination is or the pre-examination period is actually the time you have to pay your homage, to pay your due diligence as a student to prepare for the examination. Now, your examination success is not only dependent on before your examination. 
Now, you know, students generally, we think that it is only what we do before the examination that, that, that determines our success in examination, but that's very, that's very incorrect. That's not correct. Both what you do before the exam, what you do during the exam, and in fact, what you do after the exam contributes to your success. I know somebody will be wondering, after exam, everything is finished now. It's not finished, too. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I will show you what to do after exam that will, you know, contribute meaningfully to your success in the examination. So let's just continue as well. So before the examination is the period you have to pay your due diligence, do all your readings, do all your study, do everything, all the magic you want to perform. That's the period you have to perform it. And then during the examination is the period where you have to now reproduce um, and um, give what you've consumed before the examination. Now, some have challenges during this period. Some are unable to recall what they've read. Some are unable to, to um, give an accurate answer. Some are unable to understand the question. Some are unable to give the right answer. And a lot of challenges during the, um, during the examination. And also some people do some very, some people have some very bad habits. After examination, some people display some very, very bad habits after examination. And I'm going to show you those habits and also tell us how to stop them. Now, what are you expected to do before the examination? Before the examination. Now we've started, now this, this, this are the tips now. Number one, before the examination, the things you're expected to do. Guys, like we all said, the secret to passing any examination is actually not a secret. I hope you get that. It is not, there's no secret to passing an exam. The only secret to passing any examination is you just have to read. Really, you just have to read. There's, there's no, there's no, if you want to pass an exam without reading, maybe you want to cheat. And if you cheat, any, anywhere you find yourself, you'll manage it. But really, there's no secret. The secret to passing any examination is actually not a secret. You just have to read. I know everyone in this class right now knows that you have to read and prepare for examination. That, that's not the challenge. The challenge is people encounter different difficulties when it comes to reading or when it comes to preparing for examination. But we are going to examine more of that as we progress into the class. But I, I just want you to know that there's no shortcut to passing or doing well in any examination. There's no shortcut. You just have to read read your resources, read your, um, your materials, your slides, anything, any resources that have been made available for preparation for that, for that examination, you just have to read. You have to read. So let's continue. The second thing, yeah, now you have to pay attention closely now. In my years of writing examination, in my years of writing examination, and preparing for examination, there's one principle I've always applied and it has always worked. Our new user needs to mute herself. Okay, very well, Oyindamola, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so like, uh, as I was saying, there's one principle that has always worked. Now, and that is this principle, the principle of one resources or one material. I wrote here, one resource or material with quality content. When you are preparing for examination, guys, listen to me carefully. Use only one, it is recommended. I, I recommend to you that you use only one material. If you use, now you have, especially when you have short, um, very, very um, little time range before the preparation for examination. You have two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks to examination. That's not the time to start carrying three different materials to read just one topic. See, you're going to end up getting confused because at that time, you're, if you want to combine resources, now, get this clearly, combining resources 
for to prepare for examination or to study or to read is not bad on its own. It's it's a very good idea. I use plenty of resources, textbooks, slides, online resources, and all to study. But when you have limited time to your examination, please and please pick only one material. For instance, you are trying to study on let's say let's say um let's say pneumonia let's say pneumonia you're trying to read and study pneumonia and um now pneumonia is a topic in med surge. you have your med surge textbook right you have your med surge textbook you have um you have the material you were given in class you have materials online. You have one PDF that you downloaded somewhere in the corner of your system or in the corner of your phone. You have one material that your friend is carrying all about. You have um, so you have like six or five different resources that talked about pneumonia. Guys, few weeks to your exam is not the time to start combining all those resources. Pick one, read and understand what that one said and write it in your exam. I promise you, you cannot fail it. As long as that topic and that course is concerned, use one, one material that has quality content. If you end up combining, if you start combining resources a few weeks to your exam, you will end up getting confused because this material might be saying one thing and this one is saying another thing. And then now, the time you are, you are supposed to spend reading another thing entirely or maybe the time you're supposed to spend doing another thing you spend that time trying to understand what this one said what this one said and then you waste your time unnecessarily trying to understand what like three different material is saying about the topic i, I hope some of us can relate to what i'm saying i i, I know some of us are guilty of this some of Absolutely. us are actually very, yeah, yeah. Some of us are actually very guilty of this. You know, when exam is coming, some of us always want to prove, want to prove a, a, a to sabi. So you carry this textbook, you carry like three different textbooks, you join it together, you carry your class resources, you carry everything, you join everything, so that people will say, "Iwe, hmm, I pity you." Don't see exam period is not a time to form for anybody. Now you go bear your papa name. So please don't form during exam. If it is only one slide you have access to, and you see that the quality, the, the, the content of the slide is quality and can deliver what you want, please, please just stick to that one material, get it and docu and um use that to prepare for your examination. So please, one thing you should avoid is avoid combining resources when you have limited time to prepare for your examination. Hospital final is very, very close. By May, June, July, people will start writing hospital final. August, people will start writing hospital final. You don't have that time. You don't, don't think you have time. You actually do not have time, please. So just make use of um, one resources. Sorry, hold on, please, guys. Sorry. All right. So um, the next thing I'll be sharing with you is, um, now guys, another thing you need to know is, you know, I said I was a student and I'm still a student. When exam is near, that's when some of us will not go to class. And you don't know that the revision classes and these mock exams, preparatory exams are very, very key to our success in exams. Don't miss revision class and mock exams. Now, this is me advising you. Don't miss revision classes and mock exams. Some tutors are prophets. <laughs> Hear that now and write it, archive it somewhere in your journal or write it somewhere in your notes. Some tutors are prophets. Don't miss the last exercises. Don't miss the last words, the last test, because some of them are going to share some things in class that. So some of them are going to be sharing some things in class that you will eventually meet in the exam. Some of them are going to share some things during the revision class. Some of them are going to set mock exams for you that you will eventually come across in your major exams. So please, 
I'm advising you guys, don't miss revision class. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. Our tutors are experienced. They've been in this game of teaching and they've, they've, they, are, they are experienced and they know what the trend of examinations look like. They know what the trend of hospital final and um, nursing council exams look like. So when they come to class to give you revisions, if any of them come to class to give you revision, please pay attention closely because there's tendency that they are actually giving you, they are, they are narrowing your focus to areas that you should pay attention to. They might not come and tell you that, okay, let me give you AOC, but really what some of them does is they know where these questions do come out. And when they come to exam, they, they, when they come for revision classes, they won't tell you that I'm giving you AOC. But they will just mention some few things. Some of them, some of them will scribble some things on the board. Some of them will just say some things and they will just say it in passing. And eventually you will meet it in the exams. If you have any testimony of such, I, I know some people are in this class right now. They have that kind of testimony. If you want to share your testimony about that, can you just unmute yourself and, and, and share your testimony? I, I know some people in this class. They have, they have that testimony that you were in the revision class and the tutor shared something in the revision class and then you eventually met it in the exam. Hello, good evening, everybody. Yeah, good evening. Okay, so um, I'm a student of Nigeria Army College of Nursing. Um, I can remember we have a lecturer. Um, anytime she comes to class, she doesn't like giving AOC. Like, she doesn't do it. But if she comes doing... Um, revision classes she keeps on hitting on a particular topic um if i could remember last semester she was just repeating um okay and oh, uh, make sure you read on this so oh, read on this one she mentioned everything in her handout but there was no particular one she mentioned two to three times and then when we were sitting down at our group reading class someone was like guy this woman repeated this same thing like three to four times okay let's read on this and that was exactly what we saw um, as an exam question. So I have like two to three lecturers that do this like almost every time. Exactly. Imagine those. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. I, I once had an experience, although this is not directly to me, but I think um, one of my seniors said something. They, they had a, it was even, um, I think, nothing comes to exam. And the tutor just came to class, they're uh, doing revision, you know, exam don't be everybody's uh, mind now. So they're just trying to wrap up, submitting their project and all those things. And the tutor just came to class and I was saying, okay, guys, okay, just study this, make sure you read this, make sure you read this and read that. And these guys got into the examination. Imagine, you know, question one, it was what the, what the tutor mentioned the last time in class. The last thing the tutor mentioned in class was, was the first question. So please, guys, don't take your revision classes for joke. Go attend revision class and take participate in all mock exams. Any mock exam you are given. See, mock exam is not to show off. Your mock exams or prepared three exams or pre-hospital final, pre council exams, you are not sure. Um, see, guys, let me warn you on something. Let, let me just advise. No, it's not a warning. But let me just advise you. Don't try and impress anybody. You see, nobody. At the end of the day, you will discover that nobody was. Nobody is even looking at you. Nobody even cares about your impression or you are impressing them or you are not impressing them. So please, don't try to form anything by not saying, ah, I don't want to get small score so that they will not think I'm not preparing for exams. I beg, take that preparatory class attend those revision classes get zero in your pre it's better to score zero in pre-hospital final or pre council exam than to score zero in your nursing council exam please take this seriously do not miss revision classes and um, mock exams some tutors are prophet to at the at the you know god bless you all right so let's let's move Yes, yes, yes. Now, I think I'm going to dwell more on this. Guys, now, you know, on, on the flyer, I said I was going to be showing you smart ways of preparing for exams. See, if there is one way, one very sure and one very smart way 
of preparing for examination is through the use of past questions. If you agree with me, just show me some love in the chat box. <laughs> I know plenty of people will not show me love because they don't like using past questions. Plenty of people will not show me love. They don't like using past questions. They like carrying Brunas and Sudat, uh, uh, Case and Blingan, textbook of medical physiology, uh, and all those things. They like carrying those big, big textbooks. You don't like holding past questions. Hmm. But guys, let me tell you, one of the smartest way ever you could prepare for any examination is through the use of past question. And why is past question very important? Guys, listen very well, listen very carefully. Okay, yeah, in, um, Alfred said, yes, you're right. Guys, listen very carefully. Past question does something. It helps you to uncover patterns and repetitions of questions. See, if you read with past questions, you tend to get more clarity into what you are reading. Guys, guys, past questions help you to identify patterns of asking questions. Now, see, one of the reasons why people fail some certain exams is when they don't have a prior idea of what the examination looks like. So they are just jumbling everything together, read this one, gather it with this one, jump it with this one, and then at the end of the day, they just pack a lot of things into their heads and getting into the examination or they get confused. They see a question and they are like, how do I answer this question? Which one should I write? Which one should I not write? So what past question does for you is, number one, it helps you to see how questions are being asked. It helps you to see patterns with which questions are being asked. If you are very, very familiar with your nursing council past questions, if you are, uh, if you've started practicing with your past questions, you will see that um, there, there's a particular pattern, there's a particular way nursing council and hospital final ask their question. You know that you are expecting three questions in the theory session. And then you know that there, there will always be nursing care plan. You know that there will always be anatomy and physiology for a particular system. You know that you must chat, describe one medical and nursing uh, management of a particular condition. So all these patterns, it's um, studying with past questions help you to identify patterns of asking questions. Also, it helps you to know how to answer those questions because it is one thing for you to identify what questions will be asked. It's another thing for you to know how to answer those questions. So past questions gives you insights on what you are expected to write, what answers you are expected to give in um, to those questions. Another way past question help you is, past question help you to streamline your reading. Now, I understand and we all know that nursing curriculum is very, very bulky. There's nothing on this in this life you can do. You can never finish it. So don't even put it in mind that I want to read everything finish. You can't finish it. You just stress yourself and just wear out yourself. It's very bulky. So past question help you to streamline your reading. How? It's, if you are very wise, you will know that there are some questions nursing council will never ask you. Now, let me share one funny experience with you guys. When I was preparing for nursing council, there's a particular class in um, School of Nursing, Wesley Gid Elisha, Wesley Gid Hospital Elisha, where we used to read. The name of that class is side class. Now, um, if you want the side class, that's actually what inspired the name of this, um, of this class, side class. So there's actually a physical side class back then in my school and i know that it's still there that's where we used to read a lot of them go there read and prepare for exams so something a very funny thing happened one day it was a sunday afternoon and i just came back from church i went to i packed my book preparing for nursing council exams and then i went to class as usual i met someone in class the guy was reading and i sat down jelly i carry my book carry my sat down there gingerly and i was reading my team like 30 minutes after this guy just stood up he just came to me say pst 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 i said what's happened <laughs> he said eh 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 oh yeah, oh yeah tell me tell me i know say you don't read tell me the tell me the pathophysiology of headache i was like eh 
Oh, that, that, what are you saying? <laughs> God. Pathophysiology of headache. <laughs> if you've heard pathophysiology of headache, let me see your hands. <laughs> I just heard you saying that. <laughs> what, what do you say? I'm just saying I just for the first you for saying that. Have you, thank, thank you. Like, Baba just came and said, ah, uh, <laughs> Janet is laughing. I was, I was shocked. Like, what? Pathophysiology of Eddick. Like, what do, you, <laughs> what do you mean? You couldn't believe that that guy have been in class for like two hours before I came into class. And what he has been reading actually was Pathophysiology of Eddick. He actually found pathophysiology of headache. He has been reading pathophysiology of headache for the past two hours. And like, what? Pathophysiology of headache. Most of the council will not ask you pathophysiology of headache. In which of their past questions have you seen pathophysiology of headache? None. So the point I'm trying to drive home is past questions will help you to see what kind of questions you should expect. Guy, um, um, finalist. 2022 finalists, listen to me. See, there are some questions nursing council will not ask you. There are some big, big stuff that you shouldn't expect in nursing council exams. See, read the simple things. Nursing council, they are not concerned about your knowledge of those big, big concepts. Like there are some very big topics in, in, um, in nursing, especially med surge, all those. See, read the basics, understand the basics, read the simple ones. Read hemorrhage, read shock. I tell you guys, if you read shock, if you understand what shock is, if you understand what hemorrhage is, if you understand what um, pain is, if you understand what all these simple, simple um, things is, even without reading some of these big conditions, you will be able to tackle some of their questions. So these basics are just like the foundation that you build other things on. If you don't grasp this um, basic concept, you will have to start cramming the big, big ones because there's no basis to which they want to stand. So you get into the exams, you want to remember, and then you are struggling to remember because you didn't actually understand what you read. So instead of wasting all your time on the big, big topics and concepts, go back to the basics. You've done that in your year one, you've done that in your year two. See, before you start touching all those year three courses, go to your year one and year two, read the basics. If you can grasp the basics, I, I assure you, read your year one, read your year two. Even with your, with your sec, 200 um, second year courses and um, content alone, you will do well in, in, in um, nursing council. So please, guys, you make use of your past questions. Revise past questions. Study with your past questions five years back, 10 years back. At least before your hospital final, make sure you cover your past questions 10 years back at least two times if you can cover your past questions 10 years back at least two times forget it nurse cancer is a walkover really uh, i mean hospital final and even nurse cancer is a walkover cover your past questions 10 years back two or three times before hospital final before nursing cancer exam forget it is it that you meet the same questions that you studied your past question or you meet that question reframed in another way, or you meet something of similar nature, you, or you meet another question under that same topic you've studied in your past question, you will always meet something similar. See, guys, the truth is nothing can so, yes, they have time to set questions, but they don't have time to start sitting down and start setting new questions for you. They will go into those past questions, pick out those stuff, so reframe it, or look at those um topics they've set in the past bring out something from it again on that same topic so if you are wise carry your past question hold it tight if you want to sleep sleep on your past question if you are waking up wake wake up on your past question i know that if you follow this principle diligently you will come back and share your testimony in Thai class yeah i'm very very sure of that so please don't take your past question for granted. I hope we are following. You are spending one hour already. So let me run. I hope you are following. You know. So I'm just sharing these cheat codes for you so that by the time you apply all these things together, 
you are getting distinctions in your um hospital final now the fifth thing i want to say now i, I know that we can relate with this one very well too we can relate to this one very well now let me just read this the fifth point is minimize distractions minimize distractions other shuffles between all our social media platforms while reading after four hours just one hour i've been spent actually reading and three hours on social media be honest with yourself ada is you you go 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 ada is you and you are ada repent your final exam is near if you are ada just just wave to me just just wave if you know you are ada just wave <laughs> there are plenty of others in this house <laughs> i know they are here i i can of course of course janet i know you you are part of them Olanike, you too, you got that day. Okay. I know there are plenty of others here. Guys, guys, really, exam is near. And one of the ways to prepare and um, make good use of your time and also prepare well for exams is you have to minimize distractions. It's not just so that you can have enough time. Now, guys, you have to understand this. Minimizing distractions, especially social media, it's not just so that you can have enough time to prepare. Yes, one of the advantages, if you can cut down on your social media activities, your, the time you spend on Facebook, you spend on Instagram, TikTok, and all those things, if you can cut down on the time you spend on those platforms, it's going to give you more time to study and prepare for your exam. And then another thing that is going to do for you is especially social media, if you can cut down on your social media, see social media has a way of feeding you and bombarding your brain with a lot of junks. Guys, listen to this very well. For you to be very effective and for you to you know, perform excellently well and to write something meaningful in your examination, you, have your, you, you need your mind to be sound. You need a very sound mind to really actually do something nice in your exam. You need a very, very sound mind. Like you have to be thinking straight. You have to um, be, your, your mind needs to be very sound and so that you can actually recollect and um, reproduce what you've read and what you've learned. If you don't have a sound mind and then you go into the exam hall with clustered mind and all, you are not going to, yeah, you might write something, but you will just, job a lot of things together and then social media has a way of feeding you with junks guys social media has a way of feeding you with junks you know what i'm you know what i'm saying you can be on social media for two hours and then literally just sitting down with your phone and typing and typing and chatting you might not even be chatting just scrolling through feeds video feeds um text feeds and a lot of other social media contents after two hours, you are literally tired. Like you are worn out, literally. What do you think is making you, what do you think is making you tired? You didn't perform, you didn't stand up from your seat. Not like you engaged in any physical activity. You didn't engage, engage in any physical activity. But really, social media, I don't want to go into the details of how social media does these things to you. But you have to know that Social media has a way of feeding your brain and clustering your mind with a lot of unnecessary information. And seriously, these are very subtle ways. These are very subtle things that distract students and alter their performances in examinations. And not even only in examination, in other areas of life. But for the purpose of this class, we are talking about exams. So social media will bombard your mind You'll be on TikTok for two hours watching videos of somebody that is removing tongues and licking tongues. I mean, what's that nonsense? You're on TikTok for two hours scrolling through feeds, looking at somebody doing small yash de shako. What's your business? You have exams to read for. Come on. You have 
your parents at home, they've been laboring on you. Come on, they've, they've paid a huge sum of money. You can't go and give them 50 at home now. No, 50 is not for you. You are not average. You are not an average student. A lot of us, because of the limitations we put on ourselves, we just come out and say, eh, I mean, I'm an average student. So if I if I score fifty, I'm okay. I'm okay with fifty. How can you be okay with fifty? How can you be okay with fifty? Guys, you are not average. You have to keep your mind sound so that you can perform very well and um perform extraordinarily well in your exams. Please, another advice I'm going to give to you is cut down on your social media usage as you begin to prepare for your exams. It's going to keep your mind tight. You are going to retain more information. You are going to be, yeah, you're going to be able to recollect information fast because there is just minimal information in your head competing for, your, for the spaces in your brain. But if you've gone on social media, you saw somebody, two celebrities fighting. The fight that does not even concern you, you put that one in your brain. Bam, 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 bam. You went on um, Instagram. You saw uh, um, um, one, one president in one country is replying to another president in another country that does not concern you. You put that one in your brain. You get you go to Twitter. You see someone sharing hot takes. You see someone sharing... Uh, my opinion, this is my opinion on this matter. The matter that does not even concern the person in the first place, you put that one in your head. And then you want to carry your book and read too. That's a lot of information. Why don't you save yourself the stress of all those things? And just it's just for the period of the examination. Pass your exam very well first. Have your credit, have your distinction. Go back to social media. Go back to TikTok and go and do small as they shake. Please, for the sake of this examination for this for the purpose of this examination for you to do well in the examination please cut down on your social media usage cut down on uh, minimize distractions minimize distractions if you are fighting with your boyfriend please don't set to it don't set to it and um so that you can be good so that you won't have to go and be writing uh, his name when you are supposed to be writing um pathophysiology so let's move from here all ye others in the house, please repent. Your exam is near. All right, number six. Now, somebody is going to, somebody is going to crucify me for this point. Eat, drink, plenty of water, and sleep. All of us, including me, I'm even guilty of this one. I'm guilty of this one, but really, we, de we deprive ourselves of these things during examination, yet studies upon studies have proven that they are major determinant of extraordinary performance during examination. Guys, one thing, when it comes to eating and all those things, I don't really eat well. Ordinarily, on the normal day, I don't eat well. But during the exam, too, I don't eat well. So I know a lot of us are guilty of that. But really, I'm going to encourage us to eat well. We need calorie. We need energy. We need to keep our brain functioning optimally so we actually need glucose to do that so eat very well during your exam cut down on junks biscuits coke and all those things please they are they they are not very effective for our brain although they have sugars and all those things but really eat good food once in a while and one that i'm going to hammer on mostly is sleep guys i beg go sleep this is one of the ways we students rob ourselves and we um we reduces our chances of doing well in exams. The, this, these things are very, they, they are not very obvious things that make us fail, but really they are things that contribute to failure in exams. Guys, you need to sleep. The, your, your brain is not, it's not the robot. Your brain is not the machine. You need to rest. You need rest really to, to do well in exam. Doing all night, going all night and stretching and stretch, stretching yourself beyond limits will do you more harm than good. You spend all night reading and then you dash into the examination or like that, Bram. I've had an experience of brain block. I tell you, it is not a palatable experience. It is not a palatable experience. You could read all through the night and then you get into the exam or you forget everything you've read. 
It has happened to me. So I know what I'm saying. It's, it's not a palatable experience at all. And one of the things that is responsible for that is lack of sleep and rest. Lack of sleep and rest. Excuse me, please. All right, great. I'm yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so one of the things that contributes to brain block during the exam is lack of sleep. Guys, you need to sleep. You've read four hours, two hours, three hours. Please go and sleep. If you are able to have two, three hours of sleep that is very refreshing, by the time you wake up, you are refreshed. Go back to the book and continue reading. This is one thing I do very, very well. Guys, if I go to, I'm, I'm not a very long hours of reading person. The maximum number of hours I can read, like at a stretch, is two hours. I can only go two hours at a stretch, like at a stretch. After two hours, I can start dozing. And guys, there's one thing I used to do. If I'm reading, if I doze for the first time, when even if I start reading five minutes ago, and after five minutes, I start dozing. I'll manage, I'll manage, jack myself up. Guy, you can do this. I'll motivate myself. If I dose for the second time, I will motivate myself again. If I dose again for the third time, believe me, I'm closing that book. I'll go and sleep. I'll sleep and wake up and then come back to the book. I know some of you will not be able to do this because our level of comprehension, our reading speed and assimilation is, is different. But sleep is very very important you've read two hours three hours four hours please i beg go and sleep go and sleep by the time you wake up you are refreshed you are able to retain more information that way don't rob yourself of your brain of your brain capacity your brain can function can retain more information but the way that way you are using it it will not retain more information that way it will not it will not see sometimes you will think you are reading and you are putting a lot of stuff but you're actually not reading so please Make sure you sleep well as you begin to prepare for your exams. Make sure to sleep well and um, relax. Also eat and drink plenty of water so that you won't go and be sleeping inside the exam hall. Now, guys, pick your own, pick your own sleeping method here. Yeah. <laughs> pick your own. <laughs> pick your own mode of sleeping. <laughs> now, see this guy. This one pull book for your head. This one is even, <laughs> this one is even very funny. I know. A lot of you have your own methods here. Yeah. You have your own different uh, method of sleeping. You have your own different method of sleeping. So just look look at the one and you have to repent. Oh. If, you're, if, you are, if you are in any of this category, anytime you feel like this, please go to your bed and go and sleep. Sleep very well and wake up and continue with the book. You're going to be more effective and efficient that way. Yeah. So let's move. And then other things you need to consider is please avoid drugs, caffeine, um, um coffee and all those things well if it works for you and it doesn't affect you during the exams and it doesn't affect you after the exams please you can you can drink your coffee if that is going to help you to stay awake but if it's affecting you and you are just forcing yourself or because your friend is doing it you want to do it too please um avoid drugs as much as possible as much as possible please avoid drugs and then another thing is at the last minute rush, revise only the easy to grasp stuffs. When you have one day, two days to exam, that's not the time to go and start bombarding yourself with big, big stuffs. I tell you, you will not, you might understand it, but really it's, it might not even stick at that point again because the anxiety has built up. The, um, the, the fear is already there. The exam tension has built up. So if you attempt to pack any big stuff in your head, I don't know. You might understand it and you might not understand. So it is advisable that during the last minutes, like a day to your exam, two days to your exam, just go back to your foundations, to your basics, revise the only easy to understand stuff. The things that you know that, okay, if you flip over it in, two, five minutes, you'll get it. Those are the things you should just revise. And then you can just skim through all those big, big things that you study. And then another thing you need to take notice, as you begin to study for your exam, um, some people study better using charts, diagrams, and lines. 
these things are going to help you if there are complex things you're trying to read maybe you're trying to study a pathophysiology and you're not getting it as it is written in the word forms you can break it down and read using your chart and your diagram you can you can rephrase things on your own but make sure you are still retaining the point in those um in in, in that thing you're trying to read so you can make use of charts diagrams and lines and um, you can make use of mnemonics as well to read and um, understand and prepare for your exams. So these are the things you need to do before the examinations. These are If you are able to apply these things before your examination, I assure you that you stand the high chance of performing well and excellently during the exam. Now, let's move quickly into during the exam during the examination what are the things you are expected to do number one avoid the waiting room temptation it does more harm than good what do i mean by the waiting room temptation i know a lot of us will be able to relate to this one now waiting room temptation is everybody's gathered already for exam like okay guys come to school your exam is starting by 8 a.m and by 7 30 everybody is like around the school then that's when some people will come and meet you and say, Can you what have you read? That's when some people come and that's when that's when some people come and meet you and say, um, um, precious, precious, can you can you quickly can you quickly explain uh, um, uh, the, the medical management of that's when somebody will remember to come and ask you, um, <laughs> um uh, can you call, can you call, uh, uh, the, were you in class when this tutor taught us? Does that mean you can relate, sir? <laughs> if, if, if you can relate, just omit yourself and say, I can relate. <laughs> I can hear you, sir. I can relate. <laughs> Great, I can exactly. So that's when people will just come and start asking you questions. Come on, hey, this one, this one, hey, can you come? Is doing, can you come? Blah, blah, blah. What did the teacher say in class? What did the tutor say in class? Please, very common. This kind of thing is very common. Avoid this waiting room temptation. What, what <laughs> the uh, Zoom user said, I also do that to people too. Now, the balance is if it works for you, if you know that you've been doing it and it has been working for you, that when you go and ask people things like 30 minutes to exam, it is what you ask in that 30 minutes to exam that will come out. God will help you. You can continue. But really, it does more harm than good. And how does this happen? When people come and meet you or you go and ask questions and you know you start hearing a lot of things flying and entering your ears, that's when you will hear something that you've not read. Then you start wondering, ah, I've not read this one. When did they teach us? And then that's when somebody, will, you will now see one new material. On the day of 30 minutes to exam, somebody will be opening one very new material. Like they gave me in class. So somebody is just opening that material in class and they're like, ah, please, oh, when, did they, <laughs> when, when did they give us this material? Then tension and anxiety will build up in you and then you get destabilized kind of and that is not good for you for the examination because before you could even get yourself back during the examination you've spent a lot of time trying to calm down and you might not be able to regain those times so please avoid the waiting room temptation arrive your exam examination or maybe 30 minutes to exam just hang around somewhere sit down or stand up anything you want to do chill and wait for the exam examiners to call you in please avoid that waiting room temptation it does more harm than good and um number two during the examination always read your instruction always read your instruction i beg guys guys always read instruction don't assume that you know what the instruction is. Yes, you are familiar with past questions. You've seen nursing council questions and you know what the instruction is. But please don't assume that you know the instructions. Always read the instruction. It is very, very important. It's one of those things that actually shows that you are serious and diligent and it's 
plays a role in in um, um, having a great result in your exams. Always read instruction. Free, don't drop into answers. A lot of us are very fond of doing something. We are tensed, we are anxious, and immediately the question gets to us, prim. We don't open questions, start, blah, 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 start writing. Blah, 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 blah. It, 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 it's not a very good habit. It's not a very good habit. It's not a very good habit. And guys, you have to understand that this is an external examination. This is an external examination. Your tutor in school can still understand, say, ah, Konyasola, Konyasola, that's how she used to do. That's how, let me just, let me just be, she, they already know your exam number, so they just say, okay, that's how she used to do. She doesn't calm down. Let, let's just pity her. But nobody is pitying you in ex external exam. The person marking your script does not even know you. So please, you want to take your time before you comment answering any, any question at all, no matter how simple the question is. Take a deep breath. Think and plan your answer before you start writing. Now, something used to happen in the exam hall. Have you, have you been in an examination where ordinarily what you want to write, the script, the answer script you were given is enough to actually answer the question. And then you see somebody asking for extra sheets. And then you begin to wonder, extra sheets for what exactly? What, what exactly are you writing extra sheets? Now, guys, this is what used to happen. No. When they gave that guy answer sheet, he has written a lot of rubbish because it didn't calm down. So he has canceled. So he need another fresh answer script to start writing in. So that's why you see people jump and start asking and requesting for extra sheets. So please don't jump into answers. Take a deep breath. Think and plan your answers before you start writing. Before you start writing, you need to think and plan your answers. If there's any answer, if there's anything you want to answer, and then if there's any, if there's anything you would like to, um, if there's any question you, you don't understand or you don't have an answer to immediately skip it and go to the next question. Skip it and go, go to the next question. And now let me quickly say this too. Let me quickly say this. Now, if during your examinations, if answering um, your theory first, if it works for you, please just stick to it. You don't need to change that. Stick to it if it works for you. But I, I, I will recommend that in your external exams, you can actually start with objective questions. You can start with your OBJ. If you are given your OBJ with your theory, you can start with your OBJ. Why? Uh, answering your objective questions first will help you to relax before getting to your theory because the tension is always there before you start your exam so you need time to actually cool down so obj has a way of helping you to calm down before getting like active into the exams so please you can start with your objective questions another reason why starting with objective questions is cool is there are some tips you will get inside your obj there are some tips or there are some answers to the theory that are somewhere inside that objective. There are some answers to, there are, there are answers to some theory questions that are locked up somewhere inside that objective. So when you answer your objective first, and then you get into the theory part, and then you saw something that maybe you can't really remember, but you remember you've attempted a question like that in your objective, you can easily go back to the objective, get some hints, and use that to build your answer for the theory. So this is something that happens, like it, it is very common. So I advise that you can always start your objective first. It helps you to calm down before you get into the theory. And also objective provides some hints to some theory questions, and then it's um, help you with ease um, your, your uh, writing of your answering um, the theory question. So another thing is hmm, your handwriting. Guys, this, this is a very subtle reason why students fail. Your handwriting is very, 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 very key. Very, very important. If you have a small handwriting like my own, please guys, increase your font size during the examination. Increase it to be very, very conscious of it. You have to increase it. If you have 
if your handwriting is bad and you can't really write legibly, you do cursive writing. There's something they call cursive writing where you just write everything like, like doctor's prescription. I beg you, work on it to write clearly in your exams because the people that are going to mark your script, they, are, they don't have time. They don't have time to start saying what did they, what, what did they write say? What did she write say? Chica, Chica said, I'm on this table. Hey, go, please. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah, know, know yourself now. It's one of the reasons why students feel. Please work on your handwriting. As you are preparing for your exams, as you're reading and studying for your exams, start doing something about your handwriting as well. Start doing something about your handwriting. Maybe you can start, maybe when you are reading, as you are reading, write. As you are reading, write. Write what you are reading, write what you're studying. So it's going to help you to um, get better with your handwriting. And also you have to be intentional and then you have to be, in, um, you have to be intentional about increasing your, and making your handwriting better during the exams. I hope we all get that. So your handwriting is very, very key and it's very important to your success in the exam. All right, so I've talked about objective questions. Please take it seriously. Objective questions. Now, let, let me quickly say this to you about ob objective questions. Some of us are fond of doing something. We are very fond of doing something. We will spend all the time on theory questions. Then when you hear 30 minutes more, or when you hear 15 minutes more, then you rush into your objective question. You now start doing a... Uh, 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 ada, 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 blah, 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 blah. You know all those things we used to do. Start doing, uh, God say I should pick this one. Satan say I should pick this one. It is God own I will pick. Bam. Brr, brr. Start shading anything shadeable. That's a very, very bad habit. A very, very bad habit. And it is one of the reasons why students actually fail. You can't be, very, it's, it's a game of probability. You can't be very sure that the things you're shading, yeah. You can shade 100 answers and out of the 100, you can get 50, you can get 60. But the same probability it takes to get 50 or 60 is the same probability it takes to get zero. So you don't want to take chances. You don't want to risk it. You don't want to risk it. So you're going to have, I think, three hours for your exam. Why don't you spend the first 30, 45 minutes on your OBJ and spend the rest on theory? Instead of spending the about two hours, 45 minutes on theory, and when you hear uh, 15 minutes more, then you rush to your OBJ and start shading anyhow. Please, it's a very bad habit. Objective, at least, I think objective questions should contribute how many percent now? Maybe, maybe about 20% or so. So yeah, I think about 20% or so, yeah, about 20% of your, of your score in the exam. The OBJ carries about 20% of your total score in the exam. So you don't want to take it, is it 20% or even up to 40%? I think it's like 40% though. So you have to take it very serious. You don't want to joke with that. Objective questions, take it very seriously. They contribute greatly to your success. Yeah, so those are the things you have to take note of during the examination, during the examination. Um, and then lastly, after the exam. Now, somebody will be wondering, Shabi, I've finished writing the exam now. I've submitted. Yes, before I go into after the examination, guys, please, please open your two ears and listen carefully. Before you start writing, before you start writing anything at all in your exam, please write your exam number. Devil will not do you. See, no devil is following you. Don't be saying they are following me from my mother's house or from your father's house. The devil that not follow you since year one cannot come and follow you in year three. Oh. The devil that not send you back home when you were in six months, PT, PTS, will not come and send you in uh, Northern Council. So you, you, you have to be very careful. Some of us are very careless, careless and then we, we go and blame devil for everything. 
at some point, then we will even start looking at us like, ah, really? See, see the way you are lying against me? Really? So please, you, you have to be very careful. Before you start writing anything, if you don't take anything away from this class tonight, please take this one away. Let it always ring at the back of your ears. At the back of your mind, sorry. Always write your examination number first. The first thing you should write after taking your answer script is your examination number. Don't wait till middle of the exam. Or don't ever dare to forget. Please, please take note of this. It is very, very important. Very, very important. Your examination number, write it first and write it correctly. Now, after the exam, what are the things you're supposed to do after the exam? I only wrote... I think just one or two things. See this guy, or see the way this guy is sleeping. Chill, I beg. After your exams, chill, like chill, sleep, rest. Worry will not change what you've written. It will only affect the next one. Now, guys, another very common habit to nursing students is after exam, for Christ's sake, you finish the exam go to your room go and prepare for the next one which one is guy ah that exam i tell him what's my business ah guy that exam and um, question 2a what did you write what the person write does not change what you've written so you are even going to just this if you <laughs> if you start asking your colleague what did you write what did you write what did you write in question 2a and then that one says uh, i wrote uh let, let's take for instance your final answer is supposed to be 1.5 and that one, that one says ah the final answer is 1.5 you, you ask the second person ah it's 1.5 now and you ask the next person is 1.45 and you ask the next person the next person say ah i got 1.47 and you ask the next person, the next person say ah i got 1.48 at least everybody still got approximately 1.5 and then when they ask you your own, inside your mind, you, the workings you got was 80, 80.0. Then you start wondering, you, you, get, you get worried. You're like, ah, I've written rubbish, show. I've written nonsense. And you get worried. You are, you are unable to concentrate and prepare for the next. You're unable to relax and then refresh yourself and get ready for the next exam. Really worrying, panicking, would not do you anything, would not do you any good after your exam. Please, after your exam, spare yourself the stress of saying, eh, this is what I wrote. This is what I did not write. This is what, this is what, it doesn't concern anybody. Pack your bag, go to your room, eat, sleep, wake up, prepare for the next exam. And after everything, after your OSCE, please, I beg, chill, eat something good, watch, see a movie, watch some comedy, have a good laugh. It's been a long stretch and it's been a long period of exam. So you have to relax. And please, most importantly, pray, pray, pray. Prayer is very, very important. Very, very important because you might have written the most correct and the most appropriate answer. You must have done your best and written. You've answered the question to the best of your ability. You've answered the question even according to the marking scheme or the marking guide. You've done everything you could. Like, ordinarily, you're supposed to pass the exam, but really, things go wrong. Things go wrong. There are cases of missing scripts. There are cases of... Um, uh, there are cases whereby your, your examiner or the person marking your script is not in a good mood, really. There are, there are cases like that. There are cases where everything that is going to maybe affect that particular score in the examination is not within your control. At this point in time, prayer is very, very key. Prayer is very, very key. You have to commit everything to the hand of God. And then I put this popular scripture here, Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So after all your re readings, after writing everything you know in the examination, don't go back to your hostel. Now start thinking of, uh, hope I will pass. 
hope I will pass, hope I will not pass. Ah, hope what was happening, hope I will get this. And then some of us are even fond of doing something. We'll go back to our room and then we'll start, we start calculating the scores you want to get. You say, okay, if I get if I get 20 in objective, ah, that number one, I didn't do it very well. Ah, I will, I'll get like seven in that one. Ah, that number two, I didn't, ah, I didn't really write to it like that. I will get like 12. You know? See, that's a very bad habit. It's a very, very bad habit. If you if you are into such habits, please stop it. It's very, very bad. Just you've done the examination, you've done it. Leave it to God. Instead of wasting your time calculating scores that will not even do you anything, spend the time praying. Thank God. He says, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. So please, guys, after your exams, chill and rest and relax. And most importantly, pray in conclusion in conclusion in conclusion i wrote here will it be easy no or let me say not really but will it worth it yes i know this is a this is a very critical moment for nursing students hospital final is here um you the, the the rush is there you starting to put things together you want to read a lot of things you want to cover a lot of material really reading and preparing for examination is not easy i tell you there are a lot of things to read a lot of things to study a lot of materials to cover and um those things yeah it will not be easy it will not be easy i i can tell you that one for free it will not be easy you will burn midnight candles you will sleep late, you will wake up early, you will do a lot of things that will stretch you or that are inconvenient. You will um, not be able to reach out to some people because you have to focus on reading. You would, a lot of inconveniences for you. But one thing you should know is at the end of the day, this stretch is going to be worth it. It's going to worth it. It's going to worth it. By the time you come out with your distinction, by the time you come out with your credit, by the time you come out with your um, good results, you know that you've not wasted your time. Thank you so much. So guys, these are the few tips and um, things I just feel like I should share with you as it is going to help you to prepare well and better position yourself for success in the upcoming hospital final and then um, nursing council examination. So thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any question or contribution? All right. Okay, before, before we take, if you have any question, you can just put it in the chat box or uh you can dm me on whatsapp but before we go uh i think i i'd like to allow some person speak to us for just about a minute or so not the book on not my middle can you hear me sir Yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, good evening, sir. How are you doing, sir? We're glad to have you here, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, as an experienced uh, uh, examinee, I know you've written a lot of exams, you've taken a lot of exams, prepared, unprepared, and, you know, a lot. What is your advice for 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 students um, currently preparing for their hospital final and um, final qualifying exam. Do you have any advice for them in 30 seconds, sir? Can you just share in 30 seconds? Okay, good evening, everybody. I so, so, so much appreciate the opportunity, sir. Okay, the first thing I will say is your mind. So your mind is a gate to your spirit and to your brain, which is your body. So the first thing you have to do is you have to take care of your body. If your body is not well taken care of, your mind will be affected. So 
your mind is associated with your soul and your soul, you have your intellect, you have your will, and you have your emotions. And these factors are very, very important in writing your exams. You know, the convener has dealt with a lot of things. So me, I want to focus on the mind, which is your soul. I tell you, this is not the time to start stressing yourself with any relationship if you are in one. And this is not the time to start beefing anybody. If you have an issue with anyone in your class, forgive and let go. And I tell you, this is the time to make friends. This is the time to let go of any form of anxiety. And I bring to you a word of peace tonight. If you've been having receipts from part one to you go to part three, this should be an exception. So don't let that get to you. Cheers. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nozmamidu. Thank you so much. So Nozmamidu talked about your mind. Please, you have to take care of your mind. If you are fighting with anybody, please say so your fight, though. It can, it can affect your reading. It can affect your study. It can affect your preparation. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Nozade, I, 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 I know you have something for us. <laughs> Can you, in, in 30 seconds, uh, just share with us your advice for students preparing for their final exams and um, um, hospital finals, sir? Uh? Zadi Emi, are you with us, sir? Hello, sorry. Uh, sorry, I was just getting something sorted. All right, thank you, sir. Sorry, my voice is very low. I just got back from a 12 hour, no, 14 hour shift. My God. <laughs> 14 hours. <laughs> so, for me, 14 hours. Oh God, I'm back here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, um, in 30 seconds, I'll just say if you're going to plan to study for hospital final, whether hospital final is in three months or in two weeks, I would recommend that you structure your reading now. Whether you've got five weeks left, four weeks, or two weeks left, if it's anatomy and physiology, what I do basically is to um, say take this um, study in system by system. I assume many people on this um, platform are nurses or nursing students. So what I do is to take it system by system. If I've got the respiratory system uh, to study in anatomy, then I also do the same in physiology. Then I look at the respiratory system in medical surgical nursing. I also and also look at um, the respiratory system in pharmacology as well so that kind of like helps me keep track and know what systems i've covered and know what systems i have not so i'll just keep it under 30 seconds and thank you very much <laughs> so, so, so you can you, you, you can actually take more than 30 seconds if you still have something to tell us sir. no i think you should I, I think some people might have questions so let's just give them the opportunity to ask the questions if i can okay. come in with the answers then I'm All right. Thank, thank, thank you, you so you much, sir. Me. Thank you so much. So, uh, Nozala, you just spoke about you structuring your reading. Yeah, you have to be very structured and organized with your study, study system by system. Or if you have any pattern that works for you, follow the pattern. But if by now you don't have any pattern, it is recommended that you actually go system by system. Your anatomy and physiology, pick your cardiovascular system, study the A and P, and go into the med surge. And the funny thing is, if you study system by system, you might not have to read every condition under each system because most of these um, conditions have some similar symptoms, similar um, signs, even similar management sometimes, oftentimes in some systems. So if you take it system by system, you're going to um, relieve yourself a lot of stress by having to read everything so you get. So just take it system by system and um it's going to be easier that way so um thank you so much thank you so much sir so does anybody have any question again yes i have a question sir all right please go ahead and ask your question thank you yes thank you very much for the lecture sir i was anticipating a lot and of course i was not disappointed but then during the course of the class, you mentioned a lot like six to seven tips, but then you did not talk about having a study group. Do you think it is necessary to work with a study group when preparing for 
exams like this? Like, is there any important, like, can you please emphasize on the of study groups when preparing for major exams like this? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's a learning care, right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much for asking that question. I think it skipped my mind. I actually planned to say something about it, but then thanks for asking. Yeah, so um, study groups. See, study groups is very key, like it's very important. If, um, if you are a kind of person that likes studying in group, if you like group discussion, please, group discussion is very, very key. Very, very key. Don't, don't miss it. Like the, the thing is, there are some people that doesn't like group discussion. They like to read personally. Like they, are, they like to read and then they are fine. They are comfortable that way. If you put them in group discussion, or if they go to the group discussion, they might not even get something as such. So there are people like that. If you are not a group discussion person, it is not... Yeah, group, group discussion is good. It works. You're going to get a lot of things faster. You're going to cover a lot within a short period of time with discussion, with group um, interaction and discussion. You're going to have access to vast um, amount of knowledge, vast amount of contributions. You can be able to remember things easily via discussion. Yes, group discussion has those benefits and advantages but still even with these advantages some people still does not like it so if you are the kind of person that group discussion does not work for you don't because of exam is near one because people are going for discussion you want to go to so don't go just do your personal reading and you'll be fine but please if you are not even sure if it works for you if it does not work for you please when you see group discussion join group discussions join group interaction like i said you're going to have more um, access to more information you're going to be able to cover a lot within a short period of time than doing your personal reading you are going to have um, um many ideas and then what you add from someone or the the, the, the you know in, in group discussion some people might share some things and then during the exam, you might not remember the exact thing, but you remember the scenario. You remember the, the environment. You remember the jokes. You remember the humors. You remember the um, attitude. You remember a lot. There are a lot of um, clues that will help you to remember things easily during the exam when you go for group discussion. So there are a lot of cues around that will help you to also retain information better when you attend discussion so group discussion is actually a very very effective way an effective means of preparing for examination if it works for you or you are not sure if it works for you or not please join group discussion but if you are very sure that group discussion does not work for you just do your personal reading and be fine so but group discussion i can tell you for free group discussion is very very effective very very effective yeah thank you i, I hope i'm able to answer your question Olanike. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right, um, any other question? Yes, I have a question. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so I know it's going to sound like so funny to everybody, but I think this is one vital question for me. Um, student of Scoring Solar can relate. Okay, so the fact where everybody is preparing for exams and you spoke about the sleep stuff and uh, most times you felt like, okay, I've read enough for now. Oh yeah, let me go and sleep and everything. And then you're going upstairs to your room to go and sleep, but you are seeing so many lanterns downstairs, a lot of only touch light. Some people are, will walk and pass you and be like, ah, uh ah, -uh, my dear, you have my door. They go sleep. You don't read finish and all. Then you feel discouraged and take your book and go back. So even if you're not understanding anything, you're still trying your best to read. What should we do in that worst case scenario? Because you look like the devil going upstairs to go and sleep when your mates are still reading. <laughs> okay. I, I would actually like someone, thank you for asking that question. I would actually like someone to answer. Uh, that day, do you want to answer that question? Will you be happy to answer yes, that question? Sir, yes, I, I would love something. to answer that question. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, who asked the question, please? Um, 
Um, I'm saying no chikeze. Chikeze. By by saying upstairs or downstairs, I'm guessing you are in Arewa, Obafemi Aolo University, um, teaching us the schools of nursing. Is that correct? No. No. Oh God. Ooh. No. What school? What school are you in? Um, Nigeria Army College of Nursing. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask you some rhetoricals here, so you, you don't have to answer. The thing is that if you go back to read and you're not gaining anything, who has lost the most? Is it the people telling you the how to carry it on, or you that actually <laughs> that's actually going to read because people are doing that? First of all, I, I think you have to understand your ability. Um. I'm going to share a personal experience about myself. I see people read like a lot. You see people that read for 14 hours straight, 18 hours straight, 16 hours straight. And then I tried a, I tried to read for six hours once and then I failed woefully. Not like I failed my exam. I failed at reading woefully. I, I understand my type of person that I'm an early morning kind of person. So don't tell me to come and read at night with you. So it's a matter of knowing yourself. You have to understand who you are, what works for you. So if you are a night person, then read at night. If you are an afternoon person, read in the afternoon. If you are a morning person, please do not read because people are reading. It's, 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 like, it's like the fastest way to failure because everybody assumes that you're reading. And then okay, let me give you an example. You, you hear stories that... Um, exam results comes out and then you find and then people are like oh this person failed this person failed unfortunately of course but and then everybody's like uh -uh, but this person always reads all the time and he's always carrying candles always doing the always burning the torch and stuff like that the thing is that while the person may have been unfortunate men oftentimes what happens is that these people many people read because other people are reading not because they're actually getting anything uh, and also, it, it would make me, it would lead me to that um, question about the group discussion thing. Um, whether you like it or not, you are going to need groups one time in your life. Uh, groups are important for some things. Um, maybe you do not understand the concept at all. Then a group discussion is one of the perfect places to get, get, on, get it understood. Like um, um, Mr. Cyclas mentioned, <laughs> You mentioned uh, like you remember the gesticulations of your group member. You remember their you remember their um, non-verbal actions. You remember their verbal. You remember everything that they, so it's much more likely to stick. So if you are going to read in groups, one of the reasons group discussions fail is because you do not like your group members. So if you are going to read in groups, make sure you are reading with people that you like. I understand that you cannot like everybody. You cannot be um, you cannot be friends with everybody, but do not be enemies with anybody try to read with people that you like people that you understand if group discussions do not work for you try to attend a group discussion it's really going to help you a whole lot um for uh, my nursing council i do not think that i actually spent seven days like a total of seven days reading i again that is me that is me personally so I wouldn't say because that worked for me, all of my study during the nursing council was a group discussion. And after my group you, discussions, you I go to bed. Uh, hey, she, she, she can hear now. <laughs> after group discussions, I go back straight to sleep. There is no, I'm doing addition because if I try to open the book, I am just deceiving myself. Maybe I'm trying to impress somebody and, you know, let's just skip that part for now. So if you see people burning, turning uh, their lamps on in the night, you, you, see, you, you know, the way some people dress to go, to go and read in the night scares you sometimes. Like they wear, they wear multiple stockings, they wear like, hats. Like, and like 25 like, stockings. <laughs> and then you're just like, what am I doing with my life? Look at this. Oh my God. And then you see all the ways in your class carrying books up and down. I'm not saying that should motivate you in some way, but you, sh you shouldn't also deceive yourself if you know that you're going to go and sleep wherever you're going. If you're going to sleep, sleep with your full chest. Don't sleep with your half chest. Your mind is somewhere. Your mind is somewhere. It, if, if, you, if you look at the physiology, uh, let's not go into physiology now. If you look at the old stuff, when you finish sleeping, you wake up refreshed. And then that's one of the best times to pick up your book to read. 
So, uh, so uh, I'm going to end it there now. But may I request, or may I kindly request that uh, side class may, maybe maybe organizes a group discussion on side class for um, hospital final or nursing council. I don't know what dates they are in, but maybe and any like some of these days, maybe one of these days, maybe um, a group discussion on a particular system or a particular area of say anatomy. So you know there are challenging parts that nursing students got issues with, like yeah. um, say um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to recall um, these things. For instance, the renin and jutensin now there's their own system now. Yeah, right, Many people yeah. do not. Yeah, the rest them. Many people do not understand it, and then you know that serves as a bedrock to understanding hemorrhage, shock, blood pressure regulation, all those stuff. Yeah. It serves like a background. So understanding yeah. many pathophysiologies in um, anatomy and physiology and in mental surgery. So, you know, when you get a hold of like maybe the pathophysiology of inflammation, the pathophysiology of shock, the renin angiotensin, it helps you like solve many, many, a many lot, pathophysiology. A lot. Like yes. it solves a lot of problems you, for you, you in medicine. So you don't stress. have to, yeah, you don't have to cram anything. So these are, yeah. this, 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 this are one of the things that you would learn in you probably will not learn on your own if you study alone. You need to, because you will probably never hear this if you are not in a group discussion. This is a group discussion. We're having the discussion. You probably would never hear it that learning the pathophysiology of shock, inflammation, and RAS would probably help you solve a whole lot of pathophysiologies. Learning the medical and nursing management of one condition can help you solve 20 All. more. Yeah. yeah, so 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 yeah. If, if you don't like group discussions, and you've never tried it, try to try it once and see if it works out for you. If it doesn't, then stick to what works for you. Thank you. Well, th thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate that. So like you could see that we've mentioned some of these things earlier. You, you don't have to see, see these guys now. Now, if, if I, I know some of you are in these people's shoe, like you, you sleep like this during the, during the time you claimed you were reading and then you go back to your hostel in the morning with body pain. Imagine these postures now, see this one. Put book on the head. This one was even writing something, slept. You take, you assume different positions because you want to sleep, because you're reading and all. See, if you, if you are reading and you feel sleepy, you try to, um, get yourself back up and then you see it's not working, go back to your room and sleep. Sleep on a very comfortable bed and wake up. You feel refreshed. We've said it. You feel refreshed and you can easily go back to your books that way. And don't feel oppressed. The person that asks the question of people, people, people shiny touch or you're, you're going upstairs and you're seeing a lot of people. See, don't be oppressed or don't be oppressed because at the end of the day, by the time you go out to read, you are actually not reading. You are actually not reading. What you are just doing is you are, you are trying to satisfy your conscience, like so that they won't say, so that they won't say, whereas nobody, is, nobody even cares about you. You are the one caring about them. Nobody cares about you in the first instance. So just work out, JJ, enter your room, sleep. When you find, wake up and continue doing your reading. And as regards the group discussion, Nozadeyemi has really done justice to that. And thank you so much. So um, uh, Nozadeyemi suggested something that we, are, we should organize a kind of group discussion on some uh, fundamental topics uh, or courses that um, you need to get a grasp of that will form a basis for every other thing in that area, like understanding the fundamentals of what is RAS, shock, um, inflammation, and some other related concepts that will form a basis. So we are going to be organizing something around that shortly, and then it will be communicated to every one of us on the group chat. So please, I encourage you to participate. It's going to be group discussion like going to bring in resource persons we explain the concept we ask questions and clarify and see how we can help ourselves to get our best possible grade in this upcoming examination yeah so we are almost two hours in this class i think it's it's a good time to end the class now does anyone have any other question again any other question any other question 
Any other question? All right, I, I think we are good. So if you have any further question, you can just come to my DM. Yeah, so everyone, thank you for coming to side class tonight. So let me thank you. Um, let me see, Who is it? Linda, thank you so much for coming to class. Consola, welcome. Chica, so glad to have you. Nos Mamidu, thank you for coming. Um, Nos Alfred, thank you. So please, when coming back to Lagos, bring something for me. Nos Alfred, she, yeah. When coming back to Lagos, I'll come to Nakon to get it. And I'll ask of you particularly to get it when, you, when you're back. <laughs> uh, Omotola, thanks for coming. And um, Zoom user, please remind me your name. Zoom user. Um, Chi, is Chi something? Yeah. Chi? Chi what? Chi Meze. Chineze, Chineze, thank you, Chineze, for coming. God bless you. God bless you. So, everyone, please, um, everything we've said, uh, please take note of them and apply these things as you prepare for your exams. And I can assure you that even your own result will shock you, like in the good way or not in the bad way. It will shock you, like, really, this is my result? Yeah. So thank you so much for coming to side class tonight. I really appreciate everyone. Also, let's um, invite our friends. If side class is really making sense to you, you shouldn't be selfish about it. Invite your friends, bring them to class. Let us learn together. Let us share knowledge and see how we can help ourselves. And um, if you have any ways or any suggestion, on how we can improve the class as well, on things we can do, activities, topics we can discuss. Please feel free to enter my DM and share. Please feel free. Your ideas and um, your suggestions are, are all welcome. Thank you so much for joining the class and um, God bless you. Have a wonderful night rest, everyone. Oh, I didn't